How you doing? This is Keith Carlos, the winner of America's Next Top Model, and I'm on Never Satisfied TV. Hey, what's up, you guys? Alicia Burden sitting here with Mr. Keith Carlos. Yo, yo, yo. <laughs> so I want to know exactly how has life been since winning America's Next Top Model? Oh, it's been it's been amazing. You know, um, I'm getting a, a lot of new recognition and a lot of uh, new job injuries, and um, it's been uh, a huge turnaround from from modeling before until now. Uh, I'm, I'm 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 getting a lot of different. Uh, Types of jobs, let's say. Types of jobs as in? Let's say, you know, like, you know, urban fashion, high fashion, coming from the show. So right now I'm just trying to take that whole platform and turn it to something big. So let's rewind just a little bit. So you were in the NFL before turning into a model. Yes, I was. I feel like your nickname was like, I feel like you were like this pretty boy. Like you always got called pretty boy. Yeah, actually my teammates used to call me America's Next Top Model. <laughs> yeah, so it's kind of kind of funny how that all played out. And are, were you in any type of fraternities? Yes, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a part of Kappa Alpha Psi fraternity. Yeah, I knew it. I'm a noob. I seen the shimmy. <laughs> I seen the shimmy, so I was like, he has to be a Kappa. Oh, yeah, you know the shimmy? No, no well, yeah, kind of the little whole bit. little. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Uh, that's all I got. <laughs> <laughs> so what was your exact thought after winning? Like, right when they like announced your name, like, what was the exact thought? My exact thought, I couldn't believe it. You know, it, it still really hasn't sank in, mm -hmm. but... Uh, as days go on, it's starting to really um, sink in and really starting to um, come out like, wow, you really did it. So, Are you still on that level that like you can go into a grocery store and like not have everybody recognize you? If I go into a grocery store, about five people. You know, I've been taking a lot of different selfies lately with mm -hmm. different people who recognize me. Okay. So it's cool. So how's your family taking all of it? Um, they love it. You know, everybody's uh, a hometown little celebrity now. Look you know, at you. Everybody knows who my family is from before, and now they're getting a lot of recognition for you know me being related to them. Okay, so let me let me ask: When you were on the show, what is the best advice that you received? Hmm. From Tyra. From Tyra. Um, she told me to open up and to show feeling because I'm so numb to a lot of things because I've been through a lot. Um, she told me to open up and really uh, show emotion in my work, and, and that really helped me with the modeling because I'm able to uh, not lie to the camera and really give them feeling and express you know, how I'm feeling and give the designer and the photographer what they need when it comes to that. I see. So you say you've been through a lot of life. Like, is there something significant that happened that like, started you being numb to everything? Uh, nothing big, just, you know. You know, drug dealing in high school, okay. uh, parents, uh, my father passed away, okay. um, I had siblings who passed away, uh, best friends, things like that. Okay. Yeah, but like Bridgeport, Connecticut, you know, um, people usually think Connecticut's like t-ball games and picket white fences. I thought that. Yeah, Just but <laughs> it's actually the number ninth most dangerous country, country state in the um, United States, so it's really tough. And who would you say was your biggest competition? In the competition? Uh-huh. I would say Will. Why? Well, because uh, he knows what's going on. He understands his body. He understands uh, the, the technique and the, um, the culture of modeling. And he has a great look. So he really brought it. And that's why we were the, the last two there. So when you were on the show, like, I, I assume you haven't been around cameras your whole entire life. So was that like, did you have to get used to being camera, always like watched? Yes. You know, um, I had to get used to talking in front of the camera and everything. It was weird because we went to bed with cameras on us, just standing over top of us. You know, we woke up with cameras. We woke up mic'd up. So I had to get used to that. I never, well, I never really did get used to it. Mm -hmm. You know, so, you know, I dealt with it. Was there something that you wanted to do but didn't because there was cameras around? <laughs> I'm just, <laughs> I know there had to be a moment. Uh, yeah, always. There was always something I wanted to do or say, but I really had to, you know, just fall back and not you know, rub anybody the wrong way. What is one thing? Just name one thing that you just wanted to say at a moment and you didn't say. Well, at a lot of photo shoots, uh, you saw I used to always scream at me, you know, why, I don't know, think, I don't think he liked me. Uh -huh. And I just really wanted to tell him, to, you know, I wanted to tell him some stuff, you know. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. with, so what, after winning, yeah. what was the first thing you worked on? After winning, the first thing I worked on was my team, you know, getting, uh, a manager, a publicist, and just getting my whole team together so that I can really push the Keith Carlos um, name out there. Do you think that's essential for models when they go into competitions or really any type of 
on camera thing? Is that essential to get right after you get off the show? Like the managers, the publicists, all that? It is depending on your vision of yourself and where you want to go in the future. So you just got to make sure that everything's lined up so that you can get to that, that goal. Has there ever like been a time where Tyra or someone on the show kind of expressed a, a certain type of energy that you should look into modeling or that you fit more into? Um, You're very versatile to me, so. Yeah. They, you know, they try to typecast me as a fitness model because I come from an athletic background. So I'm trying to break that barrier and, uh, you know, do high fashion as well. So I'm losing weight and I'm uh, just trying to get, give them that look. You're losing weight. Yeah, I'm losing weight. You're losing weight. Yeah. <laughs> I was 215, now I'm like 195. Okay. Yeah, it's a start. <laughs> <laughs> so we won't be seeing you on like any type of Nike type You may. Of... You know, I'm going to do wherever, whatever, you know, pays the bills. Okay. So, yeah, you just might, but... I'm, I'm, I'm looking for something higher than that. And where do you currently reside? I currently reside in Atlanta, Georgia. Which one do you prefer better, Dallas or Atlanta? Well, Dallas for the night. Mm, <laughs> for the night, ladies. Right, for the night. So I was doing some research, right. and I came across, it is Valentine's Day. It is. So I came across this whole plea of America putting you on America's Next Top Model, and you said that you um, would do well because you're eye candy for the ladies mm -hmm. that love sweets. Well, we're going right. to find out how sweet you are. Ooh, let's do it. All right, so do you currently have a, a special lady in your life? So I really have to answer this question. Be honest. Yes. Yes, okay. okay. So do you prefer, do you think she prefers candlelight dinner or candlelight bath? Both. Why limit it? It's a choice. Really? Do or die. Candlelight dinner. Candlelight dinner, okay. Yes. Um, what is the best gift that you think she would love? for Valentine's Day, if you could pinpoint one thing? Um, with her, she's more like simple is most sophisticated. Okay. She really likes the little things. So um, time and just cuddling and you know laying back, things at home, being cuddling. home, you know? Aww. Yeah, <laughs> the home body shit, all that. You know, cooking home dinner, uh, watching a movie, laying up. Okay, so what's the, what's the most extravagant thing you've done for a female? <laughs> it's Valentine's Day. I'm trying to get all the questions in. Right, get all the juice. <laughs> Ooh, most of It's all been handed to me, honestly. Let me see. Or a better yet question. What's the, what's the most uh, thing that pops out of your mind that someone's done for you on Valentine's Day? Done for me. Let's see about to make me dig in my past. <laughs> all right, one time in college... I had a girlfriend. Okay. <clears throat> she was girlfriend number three. Yeah. Anyway. Number three. <laughs> <laughs> uh, she basically, we did like a reverse. She basically came and picked me up, and um, she had rose petals all through her house. Um, oh, wow. We had a candlelight dinner. Okay. Had a candlelight, you know, tub, and yeah. Okay, okay. So what advice would you give males out there that are uh, that probably don't have a girlfriend or do have a girlfriend they're trying to figure out what they want to do for Valentine's Day what would you say <clears throat> I would tell you keep it simple keep it simple um, if you can cook cook for them you know save some money or if it's a nice if it's nice weather outside take them for a long walk in the park tell them how you really feel get something cheap you know go to Walmart get you some flowers a car some candy and just spend time with her and tell them how much you mean to her there we have it with Mr. Keith Carlos. <laughs> he doesn't know he's my Valentine for 30 minutes, so. <laughs> Thanks you guys for watching Never Satisfied TV.